So hello everyone, I would like to give a quick warning. Uh, this story does contain, um, for plot reasons I will have to um, do these, but warning this story contains heavy themes of blood, gore, suicide, sexual harassment, and of course yandere themed. So I hope you guys enjoy this. And I will only be doing a part two if people ask. So yeah, I'm so sorry if you guys like it. And I just don't do it because I don't know if people like it or not. So yeah, let's continue. Also, P.S. It takes a while for the title screen to um, pop up. So yeah. <laughs> The beginning. In a dark, cold room, a man sat hunched over on a tatami floors. Tears of sadness, resentment, and hopelessness steamed down his face. A yellowing sheet of parchment with a slab with ground ink laid in front of him. His hands shook as he wrote, thin and, thi thin and thick strokes of blank ink were scattered down the parchment some words barely legible <sighs> after finishing the last character he dropped his brush the wood echoing as it hit the floor and roll rolled off the man heaved a shaky sigh and with teared filled eyes he glared down at the paper wiping the salty streams off his Frown worn face. He stared at the words for a moment longer before shaking his head. The man crumbled up the piece of paper and threw it to the side with a heavy heart. She would not care. Emptiness filled his eyes in place of the overwhelming sadness he, as he lifted up the sickle placed on the ground beside him. He bettered his hands, grabbed the handle tightly. Shakily, the man slowly raised it up through the sh sh shrieks of the, I think, shoji window. The soft glow of the moon reflected off the sharp blade. He closed his eyes, and with one fell motion, he slashed the tool across his throat. Blood rushed from the wound like a waterfall, covering the floor in a sea of red the man fell to the floor with a thud. In another room, a pretty woman sat with a needle and cloth in hand. She hummed, lightly tapping her foot against the floor as she sat, embroidering a pair of ducks into the fabric. Thump. The woman jumped at the sudden sound, accidentally pricking her finger. The woman sighed and brought the thin finger the thin finger up to her mouth. She stood up and picked up the oil lamp on the table beside her. Before making her way to the bedroom, she shared with her husband. As she walked down the narrow hallway, a scent of iron wafted through the halls, growing stronger as she neared her bedroom. Jira, she said as she reached her door, sliding, the, sliding open the Oh my god, screen door, a strong metallic scent attacked her nose. Her face scr scrunched up in a disgust, and she lifted her free hand to cover her face, opening her eyes. She saw the, sil the silken face of her husband sprawled out on the floor in front of her. The man was white as a ghost, a dark red covering his entire neck and the floor beneath him. Blood s soaked his white, I think, yata, and seeped into the straw mat. The dark and gruesome scene was a shock contract to a small, constant smile on his face. The woman yeeped in pure agony, rushing towards him. She dropped onto her knees, the blood running blood running around his body, staining her dress. 
She clenched the fabric of his clothes, shaking him back and forth. Jiro, wake up, the woman screamed. She burst into tears, weeping as she clenched to her late husband's body. As she cried, all the woman thought was, why? Through the tears, clouding her vision, she could barely make out the parchment that lay next to his body. The, oh, the woman weeped her eye, wiped her eyes and reached for the paper. The majority was covered in blood, but she could still make out the words. The letter reads, To my dear wife Haruku, I am a terrible man. I am neglectful and unfaithful. I am sorry. Even as I write this, my heart and mind can't help but think of her. I care for you, but I love, I feel for her is different. You deserve a different man, one that would stay true to you. May my death atone for my sins against you. Her husband was unfaithful to her. The level of heartbreak she felt had deepened. She couldn't tell which was worse, the death of her beloved husband or the fact that he, her beloved husband had another I think this is supposed to say woman, but it says womb. He had, who he had loved more. Gripping her hair, Haru, Haruki, I'm sorry, I cannot say Japanese names very well. Haruku shook her head furiously. No, he can't, he couldn't have, but he did. A crumpled up paper at the corner of the room caught the woman's eyes. She crawled over to a piece of paper. The blood covered his hands stained the paper as she lifted it up to read my love kasumi i know that you have someone else now but my heart still yearns for you i miss your scent i miss your touch it hurts so much when i'm away from you the dreams i have with you are the only thing that gives me happiness when i wake up i can't help but feel disappointed but i think i've found a solution since I can't be with you awake, I'll just be with the dream you. Eternal slumber sounds nice, as long as we're together. She dropped the stained letter from her hands. Haruku, I'm just going to say Haruku, didn't know what to feel. Anger, sadness, injustice, maybe all of it. She crawled back to her husband's body. The woman laid down next to him, ignoring the strong scent of death, lifted up a, li lifting a hand up, she caressed his cold, pale face. Haruku felt empty. The woman with hollow eyes sat in a wooden stool in a small noodle restaurant. She stared into the uh, nothingness, the food in front of her, cold. Kas Kasuma-san, let me carry that for you. Too late. I'm already helping her. The woman had, had sh shining, long black hair that fluttered as she walked. Her skin looked soft and smooth like porcelain. She had pink, plump lips and a small nose, but the most captivating thing was her eyes. They were beautiful silver color that shined as she smiled. But any woman beside her in Haruku was sure that they would pale in comparison. She looked at, as if she was a goddess blessing the mortals around her with her presence. The woman was at ethereal. Snapping out of her daze, the emotion, gosh, I cannot say words today, the em emptilish disappointment and in her, and oh my god, in her place, white saw hot fluff took over. Haruku slapped her chopsticks onto the table and shot up the chair falling beside her with a thud. You, Haruku, run in front of the woman. The beautiful woman stopped in her tracks and tilted her head in curious. Me? Haruku breathed heavily as she struggled to contain the overflowing rage building up inside her. You are the one who seduced my husband. The woman known... Shut up. Sorry. Not you guys. You guys are fine. The woman known as Katsumi paused. 
Her perfect lips curled up into a slight smile. I did? She laughed. Shut Shut I keep getting this stupid... I'm so sorry. I'm not doing this again. She laughed, showing her pearly white teeth. What was his name again? Katsumi questioned. You... Oh my god. You bitch. Haruku shouted and lunged forward, extending a hand out to claw her face. One of the men shoved Haruku to the floor while the other stood in front of the silver-eyed woman. Protecting her, Katsumi shot a dark glare to the two men and gesturing to the woman in front of her. The men apologized before helping Haruku up. My husband killed himself because of you, and you can't even remember his name? Katsumi sighed. I don't know why you're so angry at me. If anything, you should be angry at your husband. He laid with another woman while you were at home waiting for him. If I were you, I would be happy he's gone. Haruku can't help but the tears that rolled down her face. Y- you're cruel. Here's a word of advice, sweetheart, the woman said as she moved closer to her. Lifting her hand, she used a slender finger to trance the woman's chin. She whispered, don't get so worked up over a man. They aren't worth your tears. Men lie and cheat, yet still have the audacity to come home and use their dirty lips to kiss you goodnight. Haruku pulled her head again away in disgust. As if you're one to talk, you seduced a married man. I bet you even slept with those men too. You, you whore? Sweetheart, your husband came to me. I never knew he was married. He had the choice to be unfaithful. Yet, I'm the whore? A man can have multiple women, and that's fine. But if a woman has multiple men, it's shameful. A man chooses to cheat on his wife, but it's the other woman who is at fault. Isn't that a bit unfair? Herku trembled and says, oh my god, intense rage flowing through her veins. Her hands tightened in fists, digging her nails into her palms. A red liquid seemed from her skin. Shut up with that innocent act. You know what you did. Since you like seducing men so much, I curse you and all your female descendants to suffer misfortune because of your beauty. Haruku shouted with all her might before collapsing on the ground. Her nails dug into the dirt as she scrawled up as Kurusi with an unreasonable anger. Katsumi threw her head back and let a thick, a thickening laugh. She used the delicate fan in her hands to cover her mouth as her shoulders shook. Let's go. I've had enough of this. The three figures walked past the frustrated woman. The beautiful black-haired woman hummed as she slid open the door of her house immediately. The strong scent of iron had filled her nostrils. Her eyes darted t- to a crunched figure path. Oh God! Place at the corner of her room. Her body trembled, and her feet froze. She was unable to even utter a single sound. The figure stood and turned around, revealing to be one of her male. Oh my gosh! I cannot read today. I think companions, with eyes full of love and a twisted smile. She. Shuffled toward, he shuffled towards her. You, what's gone into you? Kats- Katsumi shouted as she backed away from the man in front of her, her legs trembling because her to topple over onto the blood-stained ta- oh my god, tummy mats. He inched closer to her with a sick, smi- sick smile on his face. The katana in his hands dropped with a shatter to the floor. Blood had stained his clothes and hands. How could you? He was your brother. I had seen my love. He was in our way. Get away from me. Oh, stop. Her screams and pleads for help echoed loudly throughout the house, but not a single soul came to her aid. I'm so sorry for the text messages and things that happened in this video. I wanted to read this book because I have a bad time reading 
Um, so I wanted to try and read something a little bit harder, but I'm sure this was kind of like a prologue. So if you guys are interested in this story and how it descends, I will continue it, but we're going to be back on our My Hero Academia tomorrow. Or I just might even post one today just because people, I don't think people would like Demon Slayer very much. So I guess I will give you another one. Bye-bye.